there. Today I wanted to show you a common sculpting mistake and it's something that I even did when I was working quickly on these. I noticed at the end when I made this doll that her hands had gotten too big and I think a lot of it was because her face is so big. So her hands actually fit pretty well with her face. It's just the rest of her body is much smaller. And so what I wanted to do today was just make a new set of hands and then just compare the difference. Usually the hands will go about halfway down the thigh and hers are extending a little bit further. And another rule of thumb about hands is that if you look at your forearm and then the length of your hand, it's usually about three quarters up your arm or so. So that means on this style, if we're using that guide, we would want only about this length of a hand where her pinky would actually be the the um, the longest finger here. So we're just going to re-sculpt these now that we've got a moment to catch our breath. And I thought I'd show you how I do that. Okay, so this time we've got a size constraint that we need to pay close attention to. And that's typically we do have at least some size constraint, but sometimes you kind of go with the flow a little bit. All right, so I want to see about the size that we're headed for. About like that. And then I like to kind of just break it off so you've got just a smaller piece that you're working with. All right, so the hand tends to grow as you make it. So I'm going to keep referring back to that size to guide me. First I'm just going to cut in for the fingers. just like that. Sometimes I will wedge them out so they're a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll do that a little bit on this big one. Just cut a little wedge so it's more narrow already. Now what I want to do is kind of separate them apart and take my wooden tool and right now I'm just kind of softening when you make those cuts with your knife, it makes a very square edge. And so I like to go in and just soften that. All around there. Oops. Didn't mean to push in so much like that, so I'm going to kind of repair that just a little bit there. Okay turn around to the other side. Here I'm going to make some beginnings of where those fingers are going to be separating from the palm. But you can see this finger is a bit on the wide side already so we're going to start there. I just tend to trim it off with my fingernails as I go sometimes. All right, uh, my thumbnail is quite short right now though, so I'm going to stick with a knife for trimming. So I kind of decide how thick I want these fingers. And then just kind of get them all in scale to each other. So I started with that first finger that that's, that's pretty much where I want it to be. No longer than that, certainly. So then I'm just going to gently twist and pull on this other one. The middle finger is just slightly longer. You go back in whenever you make those cuts and round things up again so it's not so square. That one's almost the right length. 
the bottom of it is a little bit wide. So I'm just kind of narrowing it up just a little bit like that. Now the little pinky. You notice when I do the fingers, I pay attention to the thickness of the finger first before the length of it most of the time. Because um, it's, it's always easy to stretch it out and grow it. It's a lot harder to shrink it back up. So I try to get to the right thickness and then just decide on the length after that. Okay. I want to compare to the forearm, especially on this one. Yeah, this is looking really great size-wise. All right, now I'm going to take a piece off. And this piece is going to be the beginnings of our thumb. It's just a little raindrop type piece that I skinny out on the top. I think that one I actually wanted a little bit more bulk at the bottom of it, so I need to add another little another little piece on top. Now I'm just going to gently smooth this in. Got that extra seam to take care of because I added those two pieces. And then I'm going to take just a little bit more. Probably about that much. And stick it right here on this seam. Because it always leaves a little bit of a dip if you don't. So you want to add in a little bit of extra clay so there's a gradual progression out to that thumb. do some brushwork with that too so we can smooth that out well. Okay, so that's pretty much our hand. And now what I'm going to do is go through back here. I think I'm going to switch over to a flat metal tool. And I'm going to cut in where the bend lines would be on these fingers just by barely pressing. I do it on thirds. One at the bottom here and then up in thirds, up the finger. This one is just a little bit wide on the width here, so I'm just going to add this tool to straighten it back out to the bend line for the hand. And then up the fingers too. And then just one here on the thumb. Alright, and then for the lines on the hand, I'll show you how to do those too. So basically you have one line that starts here about a knuckle's width down and goes this way. Then you have another one that starts um, so here Then you have another one that starts between the first and second fingers and ends over here about a knuckle down. Okay? And then you've got one that goes down the center. Those are the main ones that I add in. So I'm going to do the one that's by the fingers and the one that goes across by this finger and then down. Okay, you can see how that kind of got wide again. Okay, 
going to make her fingers this time, her fingernails. Make sure that's going to work. Yeah, that looks good. What I want to do is just take the tip of this flat metal tool, or a 3-in-1 tool is great for this too, and then just lay it in on one side, go across the top, and then press it in on the other side. So you kind of use it in a vertical and then a horizontal and then a vertical way. That one finger's looking wonky. Okay, so again, push in, go across, push in. If it flattens out too much, you just kind of squeeze it back into place with your finger there. Okay, now this finger is looking a little bit wide to me. So I think I'm actually going to trim it. Okay, now our last little pinky. done with the fingers, but let's not forget the thumb. This thumb is kind of on the tiny side. But it's close enough. Alright, so that's how you sculpt the hand. Now I'm going to go through and first what I like to do is just trim this down okay and now I'm just making a rounded ball shape for this wrist gonna take a peek at how big this one is so I know how well it fits up in that lower arm socket. So we're headed in the right direction. This looks pretty good. And then what I do is then cut in to that wrist, just like that. Then I take a head pin, stick it right in like that, make sure I didn't squish the clay back in there. And then I'm going to take, oh wait, this was the eye pin. And then I take a head pin. This one is missing its flat top, but I'll be replacing this with the final one. Right now this is just to make the hole so we have a crossbar. I'm going to trim off this little bit of clay that got pushed out just like that. I like to make sure this is moving freely and that we didn't make the rest too wide. Alright, so there we go. This is going to be ready to bake. I can um, play with the fingers a little bit so she has a little bit of a pose, but this is ready to go into the oven. So I hope you enjoyed that today and I'll show you what she looks like in a minute. Alright, there she is with her new hand. Now you can just tell the difference between these two. You can see how that size fits better with her leg and body. And now you can tell how big the other one looked. <laughs> but I think this will work out much better for her face and such. That looks way cute. <laughs>